Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? It's Joe here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain, day 295 of the current situation. I had to check which day we're at because I took a few days off and I've lost count. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation. You can see your names here. Thanks to people that bought merchandise and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your support. Now, as I said, day 295, we've crept into 2021. I hope everybody has had a fantastic start to the new year. Unfortunately, here in Spain, things don't appear to be getting any better. And as we can see here, several autonomous communities are tightening restrictions with the beginning of the year due to the increase in infections. In the next few hours, new restrictions will come into force in communities such as Andalusia, Madrid and Aragon to face the rebound in coronavirus infections, a hardening that comes when the Christmas holidays have not yet ended. And it is that the relaxation of compliance with health recommendation makes us fear a worsening of the situation. An example of this is the illegal rave in an industrial warehouse in the Barcelona town of Llanares de Valles that was evicted this Saturday by the Mossos de Esquadra after almost 40 hours of partying. Yes, that's right, you heard it correctly. The party was broken up by police after 40 hours of partying, an illegal rave in Barcelona. Some people obviously thought that they couldn't let a New Year's Eve go by without celebrating it in the typical style. But who cares if every bar and restaurant in Barcelona again has to shut down because of an increase in infections? The most important thing was to have that party on New Year's Eve. Now, keeping on the topic of the illegal rave, the two organisers have been arrested. We can see here that the agents have arrested the two organisers, a 29-year-old Dutch girl and a 22-year-old boy from Tarragona, who have gone to court accused of disobedience and resistance to authority and face an administrative penalty of up to €600,000 per breach of anti-COVID regulations. Another five people have been charged for their connection with the organisation of the event and the Mossos and local police have identified and denounced 215 attendees at the party, many of them foreigners who are exposed to fines of up to €3,000 for skipping the measures against the pandemic. So there we go, fines of up to €600,000 for the organisers of the event and fines of up to €3,000 for people that attended the party. I'm sure we're going to see lots of crowdfunding events over the next couple of weeks of people who attended this party asking for help to pay the fines. Now, if you are a regular viewer to the channel, you will remember that about a month ago we were talking about the Madrid miracle, how cases in Madrid were going down while in the rest of Spain they were going up. Unfortunately, that miracle has come to an end and we can see here that the Christmas hangover has triggered cases and forces 500,000 Madrid residents to be confined. In total from Monday, there will be 18 zones in five locations with perimeter closures. The effect of the holidays with more social contacts and greater relaxation and protection measures has been felt in the epidemiological data of the pandemic. Infections have risen in the last week and it is foreseeable that they will continue to rise after the Christmas holidays, explained yesterday the Minister of Health, Enrique Ruiz Escudero. For this reason, and because we cannot give the virus one step ahead, the Madrid authorities decided yesterday to maintain the restrictions in the areas that already had them and extend them to another eight health areas in the capital city and five new locations around the Madrid community as of Monday. So the holiday effect, as Madrid politicians are calling it, leading to more restrictions in Spain's capital city. Now let's have a look at the health situation in Spain by looking at a map of the country in various autonomous communities. We'll start off here with Spain as a whole and we can see that the risk level is high. The total amount of cases creeping up to the 2 million mark. The accumulated incidence rate in the last 14 days now sitting at 279. The total amount of COVID deaths since the pandemic began. There have been 622 COVID related deaths in the last seven days. There are currently 11,535 COVID patients hospitalized around the country and there are 2,018 COVID patients in ICUs which is just over 21% of all ICUs in the country. Madrid now, we can see that the risk level is extreme. The total amount of cases just under 400,000. 
the accumulated incidents rate now up to 400. The total amount of deaths since the pandemic began, we can see the amount of deaths in the last seven days sits at 63. There are currently 1,880 COVID patients in hospitals in the Madrid community, and there are 305 COVID patients in ICUs, which is around 25% of all ICU beds in the Madrid community. Catalonia now, the risk level there also extreme. The total amount of cases, the AI rate in the last 14 days, 369. There have been 41 COVID-related deaths in the last seven days. There are currently 3,012 COVID patients hospitalized in Catalonia, and there are 429 COVID patients in ICUs, which is just over 34% of all ICUs in Catalonia. Now, 2021 is shaping up to be a big year for the United Kingdom, of course, now officially out of the European Union. And needless to say, the problems for Brits have already started when it comes to traveling to the European Union. As we can see here from this headline, Britons living in Spain barred from Madrid flight in post-Brexit travel route. British Embassy says that this should not be happening after airline staff claim pre-Brexit ID documents are invalid. British residents flying home to Spain were prevented from boarding a joint BA Iberia flight to Madrid on Saturday night after airline staff said their pre-Brexit residency papers were no longer valid. A total of nine people weren't allowed to board at Heathrow, among them journalist and photographer Max Duncan, who was told his green residency paper was no longer valid, even though both the Spanish and British governments have said both the old Foreign National Identification, NIE, document and the new Foreign ID card, TIE, remain valid. In a tweet from the British Embassy in Madrid, Duncan was assured that the green paper was valid. This should not be happening. The Spanish authorities have reconfirmed again this evening that the green residency document will be valid for travel to return to Spain, as stated in our travel advice, officials said by the embassies at UK in Spain account. So there you go. Both governments have said that this should not be happening, but it has happened. I feel sorry for those nine people that had to put up with that bureaucratic blunder at Heathrow Airport on Saturday. But welcome to the club of living in the EU, being a citizen from a non-EU country. Fun times ahead. And finally, some news about Gibraltar, or The Rock, as it is apparently commonly known. And we can see here that Spain will have final say on Gibraltar entry, Minister says. Spain will have the last deal on who enters Gibraltar under a preliminary deal on border arrangements for the UK territory, Foreign Minister Arantxa González Leia told El País in an interview. Responsibility for overseeing the new passport-free Schengen Agreement terms for entry to Gibraltar's port and airport, as envisioned in the accord, would be Spain's, González told the newspaper. However, separately, Fabian Picardo, or Fabian Picardo, Gibraltar's first minister, said that only the Gibraltarian authorities would decide who enters the territory. Under the New Year's Eve agreement, only Gibraltar will decide who enters Gibraltar, and Spanish officers will not exercise any controls in Gibraltar at the airport or port now, or in four years' time, he said on Twitter. This is our land. So Spain says this, Gibraltar says that. Good to see that the terms of the agreement were clear. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Jean. Happy New Year to you and your family. Thank you for the time it must take you to put the videos together and keeping your followers informed about what is happening in Spain. We watch your videos every time you upload one because we are in the process of becoming a resident in Spain. We are back in the UK for Christmas and to collect our belongings and dog. Stuart, do you know if the proof of application for residencia and PCR test will allow us to return in late January? Our government website had stated proof of application would be accepted, but now the site does not say that. Can you shed some light on the new rules? Keep up the good work and many thanks. Yeah, Gene, thanks for the comment and glad to see that you like and appreciate the videos. Unfortunately, I can't help you with your specific query because I don't know the exact type of documentation that you need to enter the country now that you are not part of the European Union. As we saw a minute ago, it is getting quite complicated as we saw people there at Heathrow getting turned away even with that green A4 Residencia document. But as I normally do in this situation, I will open it up to the community and hopefully you can get a more exact answer to your question. Let's hope that everything goes smoothly for you and you can get everything sorted out ASAP. One here from Australia. Happy New Year, Stuart and family. We had a different celebration this time in New South Wales, but as you say, we don't know how difficult it is for you all in Europe. Our family in Spain and Germany keep us informed and we appreciate the struggle. Keep safe and muchas gracias for your videos. We watch them over breakfast daily. Yes, Australia, thanks for the comment and a Happy New Year to you all down there in New South Wales. I know that people are struggling a little bit at the moment with a recent COVID outbreak. 
I think there was an outbreak in the northern beaches of Sydney and a few more cases since then, and a bit of a worry whether the cricket test will take place or not. Western Australia has reacted in the usual way, shutting down the borders to both New South Wales and Victoria. Don't know whether they're open still to other states, but I suppose it's only a matter of time before all states are banned from travelling to Western Australia again. And unfortunately, we are doing it a bit tough here in Spain at the moment. As we saw a couple of minutes ago, more restrictions coming into place. Various places around the country going into a tier four restriction level or level four as they call it here. More hardship on the way, unfortunately, for small business. And I don't want to sound too pessimistic, but I think we're in for a rough couple of months. But hopefully, and I say hopefully, we won't have another severe lockdown like we had in March 2020. Here's hoping. One here from Paul, many thanks for your very helpful videos. We visit Spain from the UK on a regular basis with our touring caravan. My wife and I wish you and your family a very happy and healthy new year and hope to visit this beautiful country many more times in the future despite Brexit. Excellent work and info, thank you. Yeah, Paul, thanks for the comment. And again, a happy and healthy new year to you too. I'm sure there's lots of people out there in a similar situation to yourselves, not being able to travel down here by caravan at the moment or a little bit difficult to do so. But I don't think Brexit will get in the way of that. I think people will still be able to travel freely around Europe. Obviously not as freely as you could do before because there's gonna be some type of time restrictions in place, of course. But Spain's going to still be here and everything that makes Spain a fantastic country is still going to be here. Once we get this pandemic out of the way, I'm sure that the tourist sector down there on the costas will spring back to life. And I'm sure that people from the United Kingdom will flock back down here in their droves. The only difference is that you won't be able to stay here. One here from Cheese Eating. Happy New Year's, mate. Look forward to your making the travel vids again, finding some nice little park in some obscure and remote town like ye old days. Stay safe. Ah, ye old days. I remember them fondly when I was able to travel around the country and, as you said, find some obscure little park in a wonderful little city here in Spain and record my travel videos. Haven't been able to do them for a while. Probably won't be able to do them for the next few months, but boy, cuántas ganas tengo de poder coger el coche y irme por ahí. One here from Linda. Hi, Stuart. Some random questions. What language does your family speak at home? I'm especially curious if you have a rule about speaking English with your son. If you become serious about moving to Portugal, would you try to learn more Portuguese before you go or just wing it since so many Portuguese speak English and or Spanish? Finally, has the controversy about actor Alec Baldwin's wife pretending to be a Spaniard hit Madrid? It's a big news story in the US, especially on social media. Thanks. Yeah, Linda, thanks for the comment, and I'll try to answer your questions. The language that we speak here at home is Spanish. That's the language of the family. However, with my son, I try to communicate in English at all times. I don't often get a reply. It's mainly a one-way conversation in English, and it comes back at me in Spanish. But he is now going to a bilingual school, and I'm starting to hear a little bit more English creeping into his day to day. If I went to live in Portugal, would I try to learn more of the language? Absolutely, I would try to learn as much Portuguese as I could before I went to live in the country. For me, it's fundamental to learn the local language. And although Portuguese has proven to be a bit of an obstacle up until now, I would definitely make more of an effort to get as fluent as possible. And finally, about Alec Baldwin's wife pretending to be Spanish, I haven't heard too much about it here. In fact, I don't think I've heard anything in the Spanish press about it. I did see it on various Australian media outlets, but of course that's because they take everything from the USA so whatever is big there is big in Australia but here I don't think too many people are familiar with Alec Baldwin's wife and I don't think anybody really knows who she is or where she comes from and finally one here from Owen Valencians get stick for being so snobby about their paella once you eat authentic paella valenciana with chicken and rabbit or snails and artichoke too, see estilo de campo, you completely understand not being able to eat a tourist seafood paella with peas. Yo, and thanks for the comment. To be honest, I'm not really a huge rice fan. I've never really understood the hype surrounding paella. I've never really understood why it is the most famous dish here in Spain. Don't get me wrong, I don't hate paella, but it's not in my top 10 list of Spanish dishes. And you're right, one of the worst paellas that I ever had was down there on the coast overlooking the Mediterranean, one of the typical tourist paellas. It was a terrible experience. And I think that put me off eating paella for a long time. But a lot of people have taken the concept of the paella and run with it, taken it to places where it should never have gone, put things into a paella that should never have been put into a paella, and often producing a dish which is nothing more than mushy rice and peas. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. Tell us your favorite Spanish dishes. See you in the next one. Hasta luego.